that in a man who just finished the race lost in Craddock from the United States. Houston, your very first Tour de France. Want to talk about that more. But as for today, yesterday was 25 kilometers longer, yet today you were 25 minutes faster. So what was the difference on the road today? Yeah, I think everyone was just motivated to get the stage done. Uh, we were out there for a long time yesterday, six hours, and doing it in the first week of a Grand Tour is uh, it's kind of brutal. But yeah, we wanted to, to get the day done quick, and uh, we certainly did that. What I had, it was 14 kilometers longer yesterday, not 25. Bob, go ahead. Lawson, first Tour de France. I'm sure you've seen the stages, especially in the opening week, watching it. Uh, what has it been like actually to be inside the peloton in these uh, incredibly hectic sprint stages? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up watching this guy talk about the tour. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize in advance for that. <laughs> so, we all um, did. <laughs> so, but to be here is, is incredible. I've had in, incredible support from all of Houston, all of Austin, all of Texas. Great to stay to ever, by the way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just been phenomenal just being here supporting uh supporting the team as much as i can uh, it's a dream come true and i talked to you, your coach earlier and he said that you don't come here to be a wallflower you come here to animate the race uh is there some stages that you already picked out sometimes you want to pick out i mean you're up there today actually I mean, that was the first 13th <laughs> place i think i see right around the corner but um anything you look in, in the future for this race this week next week yeah, uh, to use those Velo News cliches, uh, just taking it day by day. Oh, God. So, <laughs> come on. Oh, hey, man. You said it so many times. There's no pressure on me from the team, which is really nice coming here in my first Tour de France. Uh, so that's really special. We have Peter Roland as a leader, and, and I'll be there to support him as much as I can in these mountains. And But it is a tour, and every night I go to dream or go to bed uh, dreaming of winning a race. So, uh, you know, hoping the next day will be that day. And, and we'll, we'll look at the race and, uh, you know, in a meeting, if there's an opportunity to, to, to go for it, I'm definitely going to take that opportunity. You grew up watching the Tour de France, not just these guys uh, analyze it, but actually watching the race four stages in your first time. Have you had a moment yet where you feel like you really belong with the best, or are you still kind of eyes wide open? I can't believe I'm here. Yeah, fortunately, I've had incredible support from the, the team in, uh, over the last six months and, and giant uh, bef before that for the last two years. So I've, I've gotten a feel for, for how we race, and, uh, you know, that shock has kind of gone down. But there are times when, when we're riding the peloton and there's tons of fans on the side of the road, you, you kind of get this moment where you get goosebumps when it's 100 degrees outside. Uh, that, wow, I'm, I'm here racing with the big guys and racing at the top level of the sport. I mean, this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, sporting event in the world. Everyone knows about the tour. So it's, it's just really special. And uh, But at the end of the day, it also is just a bike race. New team this year. You were on Giant uh, last couple of years, uh, and now you're on the Cannondale squad. What are some of the similarities and differences on those two squads? Yeah, uh, Cannondale's a lot more American, uh, which, which is really nice. Uh, I had a great two years on Giant. Uh, but, you know, at the, at the end of those two years, and just in my heart, I felt like uh, I, I did a better fit in Canada, and, and that's definitely been true. I, I've really enjoyed my time on the team. It's been incredible support from, from the staff from top to bottom, and I really do feel like I fit, fit in well. Lawson, when, you, let's go back to December, your first team meeting, were you planning to do the Tour de France? And if not, when did you get the call up? Yeah, when I uh, first got on the phone with JD and, uh, August or September of last year, I told him, I said, I, I want to do the tour next year. I've, you know, I've given the vault a, a couple shots, uh, and, and I feel like I'm ready for the tour. And it's something that I, I'm, I'm going to work hard for, and, uh, and I'm going to make sure I'm there in top fitness. And I think I definitely held true to that. I, I showed all spring that I could come out and race consistently at a, at a high level. Uh, and I was really happy with that. The team was really happy with that. And uh, it was just kind of on the back of everyone's mind that, that I really wanted to do it. And I playing that seat pretty early, and fortunately, they, uh, they trusted me with the spot here. And when did they give you a call up, like June? Yeah, and, uh, you know, and, uh, this whole year go, kind of meshes together as a... As well, go, for, who cares off. about that? What, where did you yeah. guys do in preparation? You go up in the mountains, do some training with the Yeah, team? yeah, I was up in Nederland, Colorado for a couple weeks uh, after California. Uh, 
and then uh, just just stay up there, stayed with Mike Woods for a couple uh, a couple days, and then then flew over to Andorra uh, and stayed in Plaza to De La Casa for a couple more weeks, and JV uh, just trained us into the ground. But it's it's showing here. We're really excited to get back to the mountains. All right, watching it from down here, he's got some TV poise beyond his ears. He's already said he's watched you two guys. So let's let him play analyst here for the exciting finish. Final kilometer, we'll, we'll kind of follow your lead as to what you see here. Oh, man, you can see this little fatty in the green on the bottom of your screen. <laughs> man, mixing up with the sprinters, there's uh, two years of lead-out training, lead training experience coming to use. But I took a couple hot routes. Uh, oh, man, it's a lot faster when you're racing. <laughs> Looks easy from out there, doesn't it? Yeah, wow. You don't see all the bumping bars, all the hop routes, the, the, the roundabouts. Uh, yeah, and it's a final drag, and, and that was really tough. You know, normally wouldn't think it, it suits a, a sprint like Marcel, sprinter like Marcel, but uh, with the power that he can produce, uh, you know, sprinters, once they smell the finish line, they can do incredible things. Um, oh, man. How long did his last 200 meters feel like? Oh, the finish line. Doesn't really get closer. <laughs> no, it's it's tough, and after 240k or something, you, you just kind of push the line. Oh man! Oh, oh, bumping bars. Have you had a peek yet at how, how close the finish actually was? Yeah, I was I was just in uh, in the in downstairs looking at the, the photo finish. Oh look look at that view. My handsome guy. Yeah. Right back. Oh man, I wasn't breathing hard. <laughs> Okay. Oh man, no, I'm happy for Marcel. He's a he's a really really good leader, good champion. And I know he wanted this stage win a lot. Have you raced right. against Brian Cookard uh, at all in the past? Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, he's another guy born from '92. There's there's a lot of really strong guys from born born in '92. That IAM guy, I think he's '93, but Al Fleet and yeah, th these guys are quick. And Cookard, he was silver medal at the. He won the Olympics on the track, so it was, uh, you definitely know he's got some kick. Yeah, even a guy who's won eight times in 2013, 2014, still has that reaction. Always cool to see every single afternoon. Since he's the guy who's smiling in once a day, what's the, what's the view of him from inside the peloton, the respect level? Yeah, he's he's really rose well respected. I was fortunate to be teammates with him for two years, and yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's a good friend of mine now. Uh, and he's a guy that. When it's your birthday, he calls you up. Doesn't matter if you're the second guy in the lead out train or the workhorse from 180 k to go. Or it's, he's just a really good guy, and he's really well poised, and uh, he has his good views on on a lot of things on inside the, the peloton and outside the peloton. So it, it's great to have a guy like that win and, and be a champion of the sport. One of his better known teammates, Tony Martin, just after the race, here he is with Jenna Carano. Tony, exciting day for the team of Marcel. You said Marcel's a former teammate of yours, correct? Mm -hmm. And that, that he was a good teacher. What's the best thing you learned from him? Well, I remember the first race I ever did with him was uh, Dubai. And that was actually one of my first races with the team. And he won three stages and kind of gave me a false uh, sense of how the, the, the World Tour was going to be. But I remember on the, one of the stages, I was sitting there, young guy, and just kind of dozing off, you know, looking at the restaurants on the side of the road. And he comes up to me and he, kind of tells me, he's a nice guy, and he just tells me, hey, look, you need to be focused, you know, during the whole stages, and when, when something like that tells you something, you, you listen, and it's actually something, uh, something small, but something that's really stuck with me over the last couple of years, because you never know what can happen in a bike race, whether it's crosswinds or, or crashes or anything, you always have to be mentally switched on, so. Lawson, there's some iconic climbs coming up a little bit later. Are you looking forward to, maybe not, uh, physically going through the agony of climbing them, but getting to the top of something like Mount Vaughn too. For sure. Uh, yeah, the, these climbs, you know, in the Tour de France are, are incredible. What, yeah, what, what we're able to accomplish is, it kind of blows my mind and I'm out there doing it. So, uh, you, you look at these pictures of these climbs going from the bottom to the top, it's, it's, it's insane to do that on two wheels. And I'm really looking forward to getting out there, you know, laying all out on the climbs and, and you know, Taking that box off. Talking about those climbs, because I remember my first time when I came over with some of the iconic Alpe d'Huez, Parasaur, things like that. What, which ones have you already experienced? Which ones you already know? You obviously already know Arcalis. Mm -hmm. You know that one probably better than anyone right now. But uh, which ones do you know going into the Alps, for example? Oh, not too many, actually. Uh, 
I do know Vaughn too, but uh, just half of that from uh, from racing on Pyrenees earlier this year. But that for the, the second half is is a whole different animal. But you know, this is my my first Tour de France. Uh, you know, I haven't really raced in this area all that much, but. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's one of those things where it's better you don't know what's, what to expect. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, you're welcome here anytime, Lawson. Next time you come back, I'll want a little more of that Bob Roll. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll work on my impersonations tonight. Yeah. 20 or 30 seconds of that next time. American 24-year-old from Houston, Lawson Craddock. And your winner today, Marcel Kittle. Here he is just after the win. What's up, you guys?